Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got this ginormous Sony rear projection TV to take apart. This TV is 53 inches and it is at least a good 200 pounds. Rear projection TVs like this one became popular in the 1990s because they could be made larger than 43 inches, which was the largest size CRT TV that could be manufactured. Rear projection TVs were the predecessor to DLP projection TVs and three LCD projection TVs before LCDs came out. Rear projection TVs like this use three high power RGB CRTs to create the picture. All right, so let's take a closer look at this TV. As you can see, we are missing the cover, but that doesn't really matter. Here we have some speakers. Here's our buttons and a few inputs here. Here you can see our four by three aspect ratio screen. And you can see that it, it is floppy because the front panel here is actually just made out of plastic lenses. And one of those is actually a Fresnel lens. Here's our information tag. Uses 175 watts. Made in April 1999. Made in the USA. Some other stuff here. Here's the back. This is where all of our electronics are going to be. Here's the rest of our inputs here. To take this apart, I'm gonna need to take out all these screws on the back, which will allow me to take this big plastic piece here off, which contains the lenses. Before I take the screen off, I've gotta take this button assembly off, which came off with a couple of screws. You can see on the back here, we just have a circuit board, some screws and there's not really going to be anything on the other side besides buttons and maybe a few LEDs. All right, now that I've got all the screws off, I can take the front panel off. To take off the three front lenses, I'm going to have to take out all these screws on these brackets. All right, guys, so I've taken the lenses out, and we've got three of them. Here's our Fresnel lens here. It's basically a giant magnifying glass, which can be lots of fun on a sunny day. Next, we have a thin lens that has vertical lines engraved into it. Um, this might play some kind of role in the optics of the TV, but I'm not actually too sure what it does. And on the very bottom here, we have a thick piece of plexiglass. All right, guys, here's a closer look at the three lenses on our three CRTs. You can see there is a very thick layer of dust on these. So basically we have three very high power CRTs and they are very bright for their size. Each one of them has one of the primary colors, red, green, and blue. And we can take a closer look at the bottom of the CRTs if we take this panel off here. Here you can see the bottoms of the three CRTs. Each one of these CRTs has a special lens assembly. These lenses allow the CRTs to project their images onto this large mirror here. You can see that the three CRT lens assemblies are pointed towards each other. That is so the red, green, and blue colors combined and make a full color picture. Once the three primary colors are combined, they reflect off this mirror and onto the back of the screen. The screen is actually transparent, so you can see the picture. All right, now I'm gonna turn the TV on so we can see it in action. When we power it on, you'll notice the sounds of the high voltage that is used to power these three CRTs. All right, now that our three CRTs are powered up, we can see the red, green, and blue colors of the CRTs. So the incoming video is split up into its red, green, and blue components. Those are the three primary colors that can mix to make any color. Each CRT is gonna be giving out the exact picture that would be on the screen, but just in its own color. And if we look at each of the CRTs, we can see the same static playing in the three primary colors, which will then be combined and then reflected off the mirror to the front transparent screen. 
We can get a better idea of the picture that is showing on each of these CRTs if we take the lens assembly off. As you can see, we have a much clearer picture of what would be showing on the screen compared to the zoomed in effect from the lenses. Another interesting thing that you'll notice about this is our red and green CRTs have a colored lens while the blue doesn't. Now that we understand how this TV works, I'm going to take the mirror off and the plastic assembly it's attached to. Okay, so I decided that it would be a better idea to take the plastic and the mirror off uh, together so I wouldn't risk breaking the mirror. All right, guys, next I'm gonna take out these full range speakers here. Here's our speaker. This is a full range four inch driver made by Sony, of course, because this is a Sony TV. It is eight ohm. You can see that the magnet is shielded. That is so the magnet doesn't interfere with the CRT. It is also nice to see that they made an effort to make an enclosure for this speaker. You can see that it is a ported enclosure and it has foam inside. Before I can take the circuit boards out, I'm gonna have to take off this high voltage splitter here. All right, so this device here is our high voltage splitter. It takes the high voltage coming off the main flyback transformer right here and it splits it three different ways for each of the three CRTs. You can see this gray wire here, which connects to the chassis. That is because this splitter here has the self decharge feature. All right, guys, so here's our first board. We have various different things going on here. So first we can see the power supply section of the board and you can see it's labeled power supply. So that's just this section of the board here. And the rest of it is all going to be for driving the CRTs. The most interesting thing on this board here are these giant uh, packages here. These two big devices on these heat sinks are the convergence amplifiers. They are responsible for making sure the red, green, and blue images line up perfectly on the screen. One converges red and green, while the other converges blue and green. Behind the convergence drivers, we can see the three chips, and they are wires that go to each deflection yoke. These chips are called convergence generator ICs in the service manual. Each one is responsible for one of the red, green, and blue colors. Alright guys, so I've taken apart one of these convergence drivers. You can see here's the package and this is what's inside. I've also printed out the schematic for the convergence driver. You can see this is basically like a thin circuit board mounted onto this piece of aluminum. You can see these large components on the top. These are actually the high power transistors. You can see for each of these high power transistors we have two lead wires plus the metal itself is ground. Over here is our video processing board. You can see all the inputs are connected to this board. You can see here that the different sections of the board is actually labeled, which is really neat. This section here with these two ICs is, uh, it's some Greek letter, I don't know what Greek letter that is, but processor nonetheless. Um, and we have these two big processor chips. This section over here is audio, which makes sense because this is our audio amplifier chip here for the speakers. And over here is our video section and we have this board here, which is our main video processing board. This section over here is labeled V drive. This is probably our main video processing board here. Underneath the shielding is going to be like our video processing chips. Yep. And this section here above the audio section is labeled power regulator. And we have two MOSFETs. 
and these two uh, shielded boxes are the tuners which go to the cable input all right guys so after a little bit of research i figured out what these chips are our first one here is a cmos 8-bit single chip microcomputer and our Second chip over here is also a CMOS 8-bit single chip microcomputer. All right, so according to the data sheet, this chip here is a RGB sync deflection for color TV. So it's some kind of RGB deflection coordinator for the CRT TV. This chip here is our input video switch chip which would switch between the different inputs for a video source. All right, so this is that other board that I was looking at. I was unable to find a data sheet for this chip here, but I did find out that this chip here is a dynamic RAM chip. And this chip here is a video RAM chip. And this chip here is a picture-in-picture -picture controller. The picture-in-picture -picture chip is probably for the menu overlays. All right, guys, so you can see this is our flyback, and coming off of our flyback, we have our main high-voltage wire here for the main anode and the CRTs but we have this other high voltage wire coming off, which goes over there, which is for the grid voltage that is used by the CRTs. That wire comes over here and connects to this uh, splitter and adjuster block here for adjusting the grid voltages. Since the CRTs and a projection TV are already pretty high powered, due to the higher grid voltage. Um, they can be additionally adjusted with these potentiometers to be a little bit brighter or dimmer, depending on how the picture needs to be adjusted. And you can see that they have the high voltage output labeled uh, red, green, and blue for the three different CRTs. You can also see that this splitter here has its own self-discharge wire, which is connected to the steel chassis as well. All right, so the next step to getting this apart is taking off the three CRTs and their mounting assembly, which can be taken out by these big screws down here, which go into the wood. All right, so the next thing to do is take off these boards, which are connected to the bottoms of the CRTs. You can see that they are labeled with the color color red, color green, and color blue, which is cool, so you know what one goes where. And usually these just pull off like this, and you can see there's a socket there, and here is our grid power coming in, which feeds this pin here, which is separated from the other pins. The other pins are going to be like our heater and our other like plates and things. You can see that we have a ton of grounding wires. All of these wires here are ground. All these wires here, there's four more of them. And there's four more over here. There's additional one here. Lots of grounding since this stuff is high voltage and there's a lot of static that can build up charges in different places so it's got to be grounded well. Here on the electron gun of the CRT, you can see this piece which has some coils in it and these little ferrite pieces here that can be adjusted for changing focus and different parameters of the beam. And here's our main deflection coils. You can see it just slides off like this. Um, here's our coils. We have a pair of coils for moving the electron beam in the vertical direction and we have a set of coils to move the beam in the horizontal direction. You can see here that we have those little uh, focusing coils and our main deflection coils connected connected to this board here 
which I believe just kind of coordinates them together. Yeah, so all the different uh, deflection stuff is connected to this board. All right, here it is with all the deflection stuff removed. We still have our high voltage wires here. You can see the, the ground strapping here around the CRTs. That is to discharge any static that builds up around the outside of the CRT. You can see that our anode caps here are glued down with silicone glue, which is going to make getting these off really difficult, so I might just you know, cut them. And you can see our electron guns here. These are only a single color, so they're not too interesting. Make sure before you cut any of these high voltage wires that your TV has been sitting for several days without being powered on or that you've discharged it with a screwdriver because this high voltage can be lethal if you accidentally shock yourself. All right, the next thing to do is to take out the CRT assemblies from this metal bracket here so we can drain the ethylene glycol out of them and uh, harvest the lenses. All right, here's our three CRT assemblies. See, there's no uh, degaussing coil for these. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is drain out the ethylene glycol from the CRT assemblies. The ethylene glycol is in this cavity here between this lens and the front glass of the CRT. And the ethylene, the ethylene glycol can be removed by taking out the screw. And you can see here the expansion nipple thing. All right guys, so here's our CRT assembly once the ethylene glycol has been removed. We have this top metal steel plate here. And here we have our concaved lens. This is the red one. And there's our CRT. And this here is our little rubber membrane thing. All right guys, so I've got the CRT assemblies taken apart and this is what I got. You can see here our CRTs and these do have a little bit of screen burn on them. And the blue one here is the worst. This has the worst screen burn. Uh, you can see the gasket on it to keep the uh, ethylene glycol from coming out. And we also have these really heavy aluminum castings. Each one of these is about three pounds of casted aluminum. So that's about it. All right, guys, so that's about it for this video. And I hope you learned something. And of course, thanks for watching.